Hi, I'm Carol Evans, and I'm a documentary filmmaker, and I'm one of the people that selects the films for the New Haven Documentary Film Festival. And I wanted to introduce you to one of our documentary filmmakers this year, Kim Smith, who did an absolutely wonderful film that I really enjoyed called Beauty on the Wing, Life Story of the Monarch Butterfly. So I have so many questions to ask you, but just to begin with, uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got to do this film. Um, well, let's see. Um, I, I live in Gloucester, Massachusetts, and that's a big part of my filmmaking story because I love to write stories about my community, about the people in my community, and about the, um, the wildlife in our community. And um, how I started with Monarch Butterflies, it was actually the very first film that I... Um, have worked on. I've been working on other films subsequently, but um, in uh, a long time ago, in 2006, <laughs> um, I was uh, photographing um, monarch butterflies out all along our shoreline for a children's book that I was writing about monarchs, and I was writing and illustrating it, and I wanted to make sure that in the dead of winter, I had some references of some of the things the monarchs were doing. And I just happened to come on this extraordinary day where there were just um, thousands and thousands of monarchs pouring in over Massachusetts Bay. And I was the only person watching it. And so that was a little, uh, that was a concern to me because I just thought, oh, many, many more people should be able to see this. So um, uh, I vowed that the next time they came through, I would have the ability to document it, not just through photography, but also through filmmaking. So um, that, that um, fall, I purchased a movie camera <laughs> and um, uh, it wasn't difficult for me to, you know, I mean, I love to paint and photograph so I could frame the shots. I um, just set about teach myself editing. So um, that's what I did. And then um, again in 2012, it was another extraordinary year. But in the meantime, I had this story in my mind of, um, documenting the whole aspect of the butterflies and their life story, the, you know, the life cycle, especially we hear a lot about Mexico, but I wanted to show what goes on here in our northern breeding grounds. And um, because I also design butterfly and um, habitat gardens, um, I wanted, I really want people to understand the connection between um, wildlife, wildflowers and their habitats and how we can help them, how we can uh, help conserve the butterfly and protect their habitats and cre you know, cr create habitats as well. We don't just have to rely on what's existing. We can help by also creating habitats as well. Um, this year, the, um, the monarch is going, to be, uh, is going to be determined whether it's going to be on the endangered species list or not in December of 2020. So I think the film is very timely in that respect in that um, I think when you see the butterflies and you just fall in love with them anyways, they, they really are a, you know, a species that everybody can identify with. There's east of the Rocky Mountains, 90% of the um, monarch butterfly migration takes place and only about 10% takes place west of the Rocky Mountains. So, Despite that, there's this wonderful uh, connection, I think, between Mexico, the United States, and Canada, and then nearly every geographic region within the United States. People love monarchs, so. And your film does such a great job in really going through their, their whole migration process. I, it was so reflective of who I think you are as a filmmaker in that it is, you know, you're, you're uh, a naturalist, a conservationist, you do a photojournalist, so you're very interested in fact and science, and yet you can tell you're an artist. So when I read your bio and you're also a landscape designer and you know you are an artist, I thought, and the film is has so much artistic integrity. So I just love the way you put the film Thank together. <laughs> it was just oh. beautiful. And so you have a lot to be proud of. Uh, now, as a traditional documentary filmmaker, I do a lot of history of, um, you know, various subjects. And I was really interested the way you put it together. It actually has no interviews. 
So to me, it was almost a love story to, to the butterfly and the use of the footage and the beautiful music. Can you tell us a little bit about your vision as a filmmaker and putting this together? Well, I did want it to be, I didn't want it to be like um, a beginning and an end because that's, it's really a beautiful circle of life and, a, and an interwoven web that takes place. And I wanted to, people to experience that. And also I just wanted people to experience the beauty of the butterflies because when, um, if I'm standing on a field and the light is just right and the light is shining through the butterfly's wings, I mean, there's just, there's few things that are just as beautiful. And it, it's really just, uh, I wanted people to ex feel that, what I felt. <laughs> that's, uh, that's as best as I can describe it. Yes, just absolutely beautiful. Just tell us a little bit about the music as well. Uh, Jesse Cook, I believe, did the music. Yes. Beautiful Jesse choices Cook. from the guitar with the Spanish influence. Tell us about your choices. Well, I wanted, I mean, it just really kind of fell in my lap because, um, uh, my husband's a guitar player as well, and I had said to him, gee, honey, do you think you can make up some, a score for me? <laughs> and he's a rock and roll guitar player, so it was, he said, no, not really, but, you know, we've talked about it a lot, and then um, he heard Jesse Cook playing, and then we went to see him play, and a uh, beautiful concert. I mean, it was just right, because it was the whole world music influence, especially the sound of the Spanish guitar. And it, I wanted something that could connect to um, Mexico, the, a feeling that was a little bit Spanish, Mexican Spanish, but also then through the course of writing to him and asking if we could um, use some of his music, I learned that he was Canadian. So I thought, oh, <laughs> you know, there's a, another world connection there. And, um, he, he was just he was just amazing to allow us to use his music like that. And so um, he has such a wonderful disco discography that um, it wasn't hard to find things that I, it was hard for me to narrow it down to four songs. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It's just yeah, because they're so effective. Beautiful, beautiful music. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. I, the other thing I was surprised about was how many of the things you did yourself from producing, directing, writing, um, narrating, you shot it. So tell me about what it's like as a documentary filmmaker really being in charge of the entire process. The entire thing. Well, I, I did have a, um, sound, a film finisher and sound editor at the end because that was one thing I wasn't sure how to, how to mix properly. And um, for, and also I wanted something that at the end would be broadcast <laughs> worthy. And um, so I guess I didn't think of doing it any other way because first I wrote the story and then, and that was a basis for a children's book. And then um, that evolved into the story of the film. And then um, I was, of course I was filming it and then I love editing too. So I wanted to do that part. And um, I laid out everything you know, the music where I wanted the music to be. And, but my friend Eric, he really helped me finesse it at the very end. Um, yeah, I had, I did have, I did have some, what, two wonderful women I call producers, Lauren and Susan, um, because I had a, 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 a fundraiser through Filmmakers Collaborative and um, about 75 people in my community donated money. And it was from, um, the film cost a total of about $35,000. So people from $5 to $10,000 uh, donated to the, but, but I've been, I've been writing and sharing stories um, with my community on my own blog and on also on a very popular blog um, that used to have a readership of about 60,000 readers. So um, through, I was able to raise funds through my own website and through this community blog. And so because I've been writing and sharing stories about all kinds of wild, wildlife in our community, whether it's foxes or all the different birds that migrate through here, um, that I have, a, I have a group of people who just really enjoy my stories and things like that. So they, and they are the wonderful people who donated to the film. 
Yeah, a lot of people want to know, how do I get my documentary funded? And it's so much work. It's you know, it is a lot of work for, for, for oh. I, knew, I knew that this was coming down the pipe at some point. And so for 10 years, I've been writing blog, this blog and stories and photographing and doing it every day, every single day. And, um, and, and it's really built up um, a, a group of people who really wanted to help fund the film. So, but it was, it's a lot of work. It's yeah. not it's fundraising. I mean, you hear stories about people who put up fundraisers for whatever, and they raised tons of money in a very short period of time. But this was, I did it the long way around. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, you obviously have a passion, you know, for this uh, subject matter and people must know that this is really, your, it sounds like it's your life's work, what you're doing. Yeah, I do love it. I absolutely do love it. My next um, project is, um, well, I'm, I've, a lot of the things I film only take place in very short windows of time. So I'm also working on a film about uh, the Feast of St. Joseph and St. Peter's Fiesta, which are two amazing um, events that take place in our community every year, but they only take place in very short chunks of time. So every year I do a batch of filming for those. And those stories are just sort of very fluid right now. But um, the thing I'm really focused on right now is a film about um, piping plovers. Nice. So, um, they're another fragile species. And I don't mean fragile and, you know, they're not like fragile creatures. They're just fragile in the respect that um, their habitats are really being influenced by human uh, interests. And so they're, they're another species that's struggling. And um, I've been filming them for the past five years with a, a wonderful story that I have in mind about. It's a true story based on this amazing pair of piping plovers that have just done extraordinary things. When I tell you how many, when, I, when you see in the film how many chicks they fledged in a short period of time because they adopted other chicks. And I mean, it's just a beautiful story. So I wanna, I hope, I'm hoping I've completely overshot it. So yes, <laughs> it's, taking, it's going to take a while to um, get through all the footage. But yeah. I have such, I mean, just beautiful footage of the plover swimming, which nobody really knew plover swam. I have footage of them um, ha laying, laying an egg. I have footage of them hatching and things like that. So, um, yeah. It's well, speaking of getting footage, the footage of the butterflies you got was unbelievable, you know, of actually having the egg planted and then the whole thing with them inserting themselves to be able to become a chrysalis. Mm -hmm. I mean, t you know, that was just, the footage you got was just unbelievable. So was this just uh, just patience and what was it? How was it that you got that? Well, um, in my, I, I um, have a lot of milkweed in my backyard. So um, I didn't want to, I've seen a lot of um, footage of butterflies and they're, it's filmed in a, labo a laboratory. Oh. And um, I didn't want that. I wanted to film it in, um, as it's unfolding in nature, I wanted people to see what it looks like in a garden or in a um, in a wild field. So um, when I first started filming, and I could tell at the beginning, I didn't know how long it would take the butterfly to pupate. So I would set up my camera on a tripod. Wind might come in, you know, whatever, um, and it might take twelve hours for it to happen. But after time, I could see that, okay, well, this, these few steps happen, and now I know the butterfly is going to pupate, so maybe the camera was only running for an hour or whatever instead of 12 hours. <laughs> so, but, it, you know, at first it was um, challenging trying to capture some of these things. Uh, a lot of, you know, but that's the beauty of digital camera work. You know, I could have 11 hours of nothing and, you know, just delete it and then have an hour of something. So I don't know. I don't know how I could have ever filmed this um, with real film and yeah. with actual film. Um, it, I don't, I mean, it would have just been millions of dollars. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. so what is your hope with this film? You know, I know, uh, you know, the, the situation has changed everything, but what would be your ideal situation to happen with this film? So my very ideal situation is um, to 
um, have it go to film festivals and things like that. And then um, we were supposed to have some screenings in our community for the investors and for the, um, just for my community in general, but those were all um, canceled or postponed. So, um, so I'm also at the same time, um, sending the film to distributors as well, because I would love for it to go, um, to go the educational path of, um, to be in schools, libraries. I mean, I can do a lot of that myself. I already do a lot of lecture programs and things like that. So instead of having a slideshow about the butterflies or piping clovers or whatever, now I can, you know, show the film, which would be, which would be wonderful. But I would love for it to reach a much broader audience than I can do myself in our community here. And so I'm really hoping for American Public Television or um, something like that, something along those lines. And then, um, yeah, so education, distribution, uh, online somehow, if it can be done in an educational format. It's very, I have made up all kinds of curriculum and things like that to go with it. That was, I've been writing some about them for so much for so many years. It was easy, very easy to pull together a curriculum. And I have, because um, I did learn this from a, a, a lovely woman from American Public Television. She told me that um, so many uh, filmmakers don't have stills. She's shocked at how many people don't have stills. Um, be, so I said, well, you don't have to worry about that because I'm one minute I'm filming, the next minute I'm photographing. So for all my projects, I have, you know, hundreds of thousands of stills. So, but that is, you know, that's just a tip I could pass along is they re you, while you're filming, you should really be making stills all along because that will, that really helps with promotion. Great. And if people want to find out more about your film and your work, where would they go? Um, well, I have two websites. They can go to um, kimsmithdesigns.com and that will, um, that will take you to the Monarch Film Project, the Piping Clover Film Project, the Snowy Owl Film Project. So you can go to kimsmithdesigns.com or monarchbutterflyfilm.com, either website, and you'll look with the monarchbutterflyfilm.com. It's very specifically about the monarchs. So. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. This is great. I, I'd like to say thank you to you for doing this. I think this is really awesome. And I also um, want to thank Gorman, too, because I think the support shown by New Haven Documentary um, Film Festival has been really awesome. I saw that video that you guys produced, and um, it's just great. It's just a really, a really terrific thing to do for the filmmakers, and it's just been um been a very it's been an honor to be asked to be included in the film festival so thank you for that you are welcome we are all actual filmmakers so we really get it and we're very supportive of everybody out there trying to make documentary films because we know it's very difficult and you need to feel like you're supported by a community you so know. thank you very much and yeah. i look i have seen your film many times i hope everyone out there takes a look at kim smith's film and uh, this has been Carol Evans for the New Haven Documentary Film Festival. Thank you, Carol. Thanks.